Hello, it's Dr. Jason Munsell. It is uh, about 1 o'clock, 1.05 actually, uh, Tuesday, July 26, 2016. Um, I enjoyed our class last night. I um, hope that you learned a little bit about uh, persuasion and uh, the motivated sequence and logos. Um, and uh, please uh, remember to uh, thoroughly read the, the new assignments that are up. Um, and uh, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. But uh, if you have any questions about the feedback that you got for the uh, first speech, please let me know. Um, and same with the paper. I still have about five or six papers to get through. I think five, six, I don't know. Um, and I'm going to try to get through those uh, this afternoon. Uh, so I'll have them for you. Uh, you should, everybody, uh, by tomorrow night, should have feedback for the, uh, the papers. Um, but now, as I said yesterday, we're moving to the, uh, the persuasion, uh, persuasive paper, persuasive speech. Um, what um, I'm going to do in this very, very brief uh, video is go back through some stuff that I, uh, I didn't talk about last night when it comes to uh, Logos, and that is the bad Logos. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about visuals, and then I'm going to say a little bit more about uh, persuasive organization. Um, just to sort of reiterate some of the things that I, I said yesterday. Um, and then uh, Wednesday night, uh, tomorrow night, uh, I'll cover the ethos and the pathos, and I'll try to bring in stuff about rhetorical style as well. Uh, but we might have to wait uh, until Thursday, and I'll do rhetorical style for an online lecture. We shall see. Such is the nature of our hybrid time together. Um, so let me back up. And uh, la 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 la. I put some new PowerPoints up. Um, just one, visuals. Um, and then obviously I'll put this lecture up when I, I'm done with it. Um, but what I wanted to uh, talk about is the bad logos. We talked last night about um, stock issues and all that type of stuff, but we talked about the different types of, of reasoning uh, that you can use. And there's other types of reasoning, but generally we talked about um, uh, reasoning by example or inductive, uh, reasoning by enthymeme or, or um, deductive, uh, causal and analogical reasoning. But there are a lot of modes of reasoning that might be influential, but not so much persuasive when it, you know, we think about our ethical perspective of persuasion. Um, so bad, bad logos. Fallacies. Fallacies are errors in reasoning. Sometimes people don't realize they're errors, but they're errors because they just don't make sense or they're not based on any sort of evidence uh, or they're just something screwed up. It's screwy. Just like two plus two ain't five. Some folks just err in reason, reason but, that, but they can be very influential. Maybe not persuasive because you're hiding stuff from the, the audience. Um, but people oftentimes hear fallacies and then that, that influences them to vote a certain way or to buy a certain product and that's somewhat problematic. Okay, so I just said all that type of stuff. Um, and they're hard to see, right? Um, and I'm Mr. T. I pity the fool who used fallacies and knows. Here's what I want you to do, and I'll probably say this someplace in here. I want you to avoid fallacies in your speech and your paper, but also at the same time, one of the things that I'm asking you to do, I wasn't terribly clear about it last night though, but um, in the spirit of refutation, someplace in your speech, perhaps the visualization, uh, you need to showcase how there might be um, folks who disagree with you. And if, if you find their arguments through your research um, that some of their logic is, is fallacious, you can call them out on that. That's cool. But what are we talking about? Examples of fallacies. Non sequitur uh, can be a general problem with reasoning from principle or just general reasoning. Columbia College should build a new parking garage because monkeys climb trees. That makes no sense whatsoever. That, that's, that, that's the point. It just doesn't follow. It's not logical. It makes no sense why we should do this because of that. I mean, hasty generalization I did talk about last night. Simply when we don't have enough evidence. 
Um, you have a, I have a silver car. My neighbor has a silver car. Therefore, all cars are silver. No, hasty generalization. We don't have enough evidence. Post hoc ergo propter hoc. I also talked about that. Uh, that's just the idea that chronolo chronology assumes a causal effect. Again, I went to the library. After I went to the library, I got sick. Therefore, the library caused me to get sick. Can't say that. Um, and people try all the time to make those types of, of arguments. Um, this person was in this position, and then this happened. Therefore, this was the fault of this particular person. Can't. The world is messy. Invalid defective analogy. I sort of didn't. I sort of implied this, but um, oftentimes we try to make analogical arguments, but we screw up the analogy because they're not analogous situations. So, for instance, you know, USC did this, so Columbia College should do that. That's not a good analogy. If you compare Columbia College with other small liberal arts colleges, that's different. Um, so, be careful of that. Red herring introduces an irrelevant issue. Diverts attention. That's why it's fallacious. I don't know why we're talking about um, my affair with uh, Monica Lewinsky when we have um, uh, something else to deal with, anything to deal with. Uh, you know, anytime any politician gets accused of anything, they always sort of throw red herrings out there. Why are people discussing this? Blah, blah, blah. But that's a red herring because the con. The, 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 we're talking about this thing right here. Um, ad hominem is just attacking the person and not the issue. He's stupid. He's stupid. Um, what, what, uh, try to take apart the, the policy. I disagree with this policy because it won't work. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, ad hominem is just name calling. That's what it is. You, you're a. Bleh. Junior high stuff that we see in presidential elections. Either or is a fallacy because it's offering just two uh, two things to do when there's obviously more things that we can do. Either we do this or we do that. Either we go to war or our country will be destroyed or whatever. I don't know. Uh, there's always multiple things that we can do, multiple options, and if you force the idea that there's just two options, uh, that is, is usually fallacious because it's just wrong. There's always more than two options. Bandwagon assumes that because something is good and popular, it must be right. Everybody cheats, so it's okay. Yeah. And also, the flip side, if a minority of folks think this way doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. So, bandwagon. Jump on the bandwagon. Everybody likes this, so it must be good. Slippery slope. Assumes that if this first thing will happen, then this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. But it's, it's a fallacy because there's no evidence. So, they take away this right, and then next they'll have, you know, they'll take away our right to to speak and then they'll take away our right to live and then they're going to put us all into a hut. Or, you know, uh, if you legalize marijuana, next they're going to legalize heroin and then they're going to legalize whatever. Or it won't be, yeah, whatever. Um, a lot of people argue that the Vietnam War was fought on slippery slope logic. If this country gets communist and this, da, 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 but there was no necessary evidence to, to show against that. So, again, don't be the F team. Remember the A team? Yes. I pity the fool if you don't remember the A team. Don't be the F team. Don't include fallacies. Be very careful when you're making various arguments that they're not fallacious arguments. And also, on the flip side, if you are arguing against somebody, that is, if uh, you are uh, offering uh, somebody else's argument that is against yours, but you notice that they are indeed using a fallacious argument, you say, well, this is the opposite of an F argument. This is, uh, I think stuff like that. So, don't be the F team. Avoid fallacies. Make good ethical arguments. That being said, you can also use visuals. And in fact, you should use visuals. I don't know if it's part of the point system, but I still want you to do it. Um, this is spring 2016, it should be summer. I'm falling behind. Um, 
here's the thing, and this uh, this is in in our fourth edition. Look at this, free copy for instructors, not for resale. I got this for free. Um, chapters 20, 21, and 22 uh, cover the stuff on visuals, and I will uh, encourage you, obviously, to read that. Uh, as well as the chapter on persuasive speaking. Um, blah, 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 blah. What chapter 20 does is sort of just talking about presentation aids. Um, and then 21 talks about designing those. And then 22 is just basically a brief guide to PowerPoint, if you want to use PowerPoint. And I, you don't have to, but you can. So long as you have a couple of visuals that enhance the persuasiveness of your speech, that's cool with me. So, by the way, I love visuals. Actually, that's, that's a, I'm being sarcastic there. I'm not a big fan of visuals. I, I like, um, I, we live in a visual world, but I sort of, when it comes to speeches, I tend to like sort of old fashioned speeches. Um, like at a convention. Uh, it's not like they have PowerPoint presentations. 